Hello there, my name is Kimo and welcome to my home. Today I'll be sharing with you five different holiday DIYs that use your favorite photos and images. So let's get started. For our very first DIY project today, we'll be creating a photo gift box using this gift box that comes from Dollar Tree. I just love the shape of it in a little house, and yes, it is made out of cardboard, but it is so well constructed and so cute, I knew that I could do something really fabulous with this. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna give this gift box a little bit of a whitewash using some paint. And I'm using a dry brush technique because I don't wanna saturate this gift box because after all, it is made out of cardboard. Whether you're making these projects for yourself or especially for a friend, I find that social media like Instagram and Facebook are great sources for photos. Who knew that your Facebook stocking habit would actually come in handy for these crafts? After painting both the top and bottom of that gift box and setting it aside to dry, I'm going to cut up some of the photos that I retrieved from my friend's Facebook account. Kim had these great photos um, from a long time ago of her and her kids, and so I decided to make them black and white in PowerPoint, and I formatted the pictures to the exact size that I needed them to be on our gift box. And you can see here that I'm going to be decoupaging all of those photos onto our little house using some decoupage glue. Now you can probably see why I decided to paint this gift box white before applying the photos. I wanted to create a nice, simple, white canvas-like background, and I also wanted to be sure that none of the design of the original gift box showed through the actual photos. You can also see here that I'm using my fingers to smooth out those photos as much as possible. Once the decoupage glue has dried, I'm now going to apply some red acrylic craft paint to two sections of the house to make it pop and make it look a little bit more like a barn. I'm going to add a couple of snowflake embellishments to our house as well. And first I'm going to cover up that hole with some spackle that turns white when it dries. After the spackle has dried, I'm going to paint both of the snowflakes in a white acrylic paint to make sure that the paint is uniform. I'm using some hot glue to attach those snowflakes to both sides of our little photo gift box house. And after that, I'm going to fill it with some gifts that we prepared for Kim. First, I'm going to lay in a couple of sheets of tissue paper, and then we'll incorporate the other gifts that we have, which include some ginger lavender tea, some local organic honey, a tea strainer, and a lemon. After putting our gift together, here's our final result. I really hope Kim loves this gift as much as I loved making it for her. Today I'm participating in Heidi Sonball's Friend Friday Hop, and link down in my description box below is a link to the next channel in the hop. Each channel will be linked to the next person in the hop, which will take you around the full crafter's circle, and please make sure to leave a comment along the way to be entered into the giveaway, which is a $375 Amazon gift card. 
My second DIY project today is a snowy mini photo gallery. And for this project, we have a few supplies here that I got from Dollar Tree, including that let it snow sign, and also some paint sticks from Home Depot. I'm using some of that pink spackle again to make sure that we fill in that hole on the let it snow sign. And setting that aside, now we're going to assemble our paint sticks together. Now you can see that I have a little straight edge to make sure that the sticks themselves are straight. And I have a couple of pieces that I've cut out that are going to attach to those sticks. Now you can see here that I'm just using hot glue to assemble this together, which I would recommend if you're using raw wood. Once you paint the wood or once you stain it, it gets a little tricky and sometimes the hot glue doesn't hold. So I'm doing this step first now and then I'm going to add some stain a little bit later. Now because hot glue doesn't stick very well to paint painted surfaces or stained surfaces, you can see here that I'm adding little bits of wood to the top there, which will actually help to hold our sign in place, which I'll show you in a future step. I'm using a dark wood stain to stain both the front and the back of our sign here, but you can see that I'm careful not to stain those little tiny wood pieces at the top that we just added. To camouflage that hole, I decided to add a little bit of snow to the sign. And I'm just adding a little bit to the tops there as if the snow has fallen down on the sign. And here I'm just using some white latex paint for this effect. After our wood stain has dried, we're gonna flip that over and we're going to add some twine. Now on the twine itself, I decided to braid it so that it could be a little bit thicker and stronger. And we're going to use this piece to create a hanging apparatus for this particular project. I braided more twine and we're using some of those little cute wooden cutout snowflakes from Dollar Tree and we're going to attach this to the back as well. After hot gluing all of those twine pieces to the back of our project, now I'm going to use some black felt to make sure that those twine pieces are really securely fastened down with the hot glue. So I just cut out some of those felt pieces there. You can see me adding some hot glue to each of the twine ends and we're going to cover that hot glue with these pieces of felt. Now we're going to add that let it snow sign to the top of our project using some hot glue and you can see here that those wooden pieces are exposed just as we had planned which is going to help this sign to stay on our project a bit better. And using my friend's Instagram photos of her family, I've shrunk down some images to about two inches by two inches and we're using some clothespins to hang them to our project. And here's our final result. I just love the neutral tones on this project, which really makes those photos come to life. I hope you're enjoying what you're seeing so far in these projects. If you like what you see, please remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell to get notified every time I upload a new video to my channel. My third DIY project is this very simple but cool photo ornament. The ornament itself comes from Dollar Tree, and you can see that the top pops off. It's round, but it's still sort of flat, if that makes sense. It's not a complete sphere. But we're going to take our photo and roll it on a highlighter to avoid any bending in the photo and we're going to pop it right into that ornament. 
I'm adding some Epsom salt to our project to give it a bit of a snowy effect. And I'll also add some embellishments inside some simple silver branches that I cut up just to add a little bit of visual interest. With some ribbon, I'll be creating a bow and a hanger for our ornament to finish it off. And in just a couple of minutes, here's our final result. With this project, your favorite photos can also become your favorite ornaments. For my fourth holiday DIY project today, I'll be making a luminary out of a photo and a vase. The vase itself comes from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to use vellum paper for this project. Now, vellum paper is a kind of paper that is semi-transparent, and this particular vellum paper is six inches by six inches, and it has a subtle pattern on each of the pages. Now I printed up a photo on regular copy paper and I'm going to take our vellum, which again is six inches by six inches, and I'm going to carefully tape that vellum onto the photocopied image. I'm taping the edge of the vellum that will feed into the printer. So I've got a couple of images ready to go with the vellum already taped on there. I'm going to insert them into my printer and print it up. After your printer has done its work, you can slowly and carefully remove that vellum from our photocopy paper. Now I'm going to take these images and with some double-sided tape, simply apply them to our Dollar Tree vase. By applying two of these images to the vase, there will be a little bit of overlap in the images themselves. So I'm trying to minimize that seam as much as possible. I also decided to add a border to our photos, kind of like a frame. So I'm using a very thin black ribbon to create a border on the top and the bottom of our vase. I hope you're enjoying these projects so far. Let me know in a comment down below which of these five DIY holiday projects is your favorite. I love this project because it's so simple and yet so effective. Now we're just gonna add in a little flameless votive candle light to watch our luminary glow. And here is our final result. I am really loving this snowy, subtle pattern in the vellum paper, which just really creates this wintry effect. Our fifth holiday DIY project is maybe the simplest one yet. These are a set of photo coasters that are made from these little tiles that I got from Home Depot. Now these are free flooring tiles, and what I love about them is that they come in a variety of colors, but they are all the same square shape, which is perfect to make our coasters. I'm going to take a series of four images and cut them up so that they'll fit perfectly onto each of our coasters. Using some decoupage glue, I'm going to apply a thin layer of decoupage to the backs of each of the photos themselves, as well as to the surface of the tiles.
After laying down the photo, you also want to apply more decoupage glue to the tops of the coasters for added protection. I'm using here a glossy clear coat to not only provide some shine, but also protection to these coasters. And after applying a couple of coats to our coasters, here is our final result. I love these coasters because you can display your favorite photos just about anywhere. Your good memories should last all year long. I want to thank Heidi Songball for the chance to participate in this Friend Friday hop. It means a lot to me and it's been very, very exciting and I want to wish all of you happy holidays. Thanks for joining me today. Please remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell to get notified every time I upload a new video. And see you around.